I've got the brown and the blue lead there. Now, this is across, I think this is across the mains. Now, oh, the, the knob's missing on the switch here. So I've got to poke something in here to get the switch to go on and off. So I've got those contacts across there. The probes across the contacts on the switch. If they'll stay there. I just want to check to see if the switch is in fact working. Okay, that's good. That's good because that's across the mains. If that was to believe, it would mean there's a short. So let's go across here and see. That one's okay. So you see that one is going through from the positive onto the motor feed. From that side to that side. It does it's not a through switch that way. It's a through switch that way. Okay. Now let's check the negative, which is here, the blue, to the other white, which goes to the motor. A lot of these machines have got speed controls on them. That's working fine. Okay, so the switch is okay. Right. Now, are the leads connected to the motor? Check them out, see if they are. Yes or no? No, they're not. Because this motor has been taken out before. Right. And it was left off purposely to stop anybody from inadvertently plugging it in. So now here's the motor. These two lit white leads here go to your brushes on the motor. <coughs> right, pardon me. And so there's your one contact there, okay? And the other contact is at the other side here. <coughs> pardon me. And uh, on the top of the motor, you've got this which uh, holds the motor in the right position that thing there okay and a, a, a little cover plate which covers up the leads that go to the ring gear on the other side yeah and the motor goes in here see those rubber things there they fit in those little slots there okay see that like that and then you, oh, don't forget the cover. <laughs> don't forget the cover for the contacts there. So that goes in, that goes on top. These little logs here go in the two holes in the top of the motor and it'll be held in place nicely. So now let's disconnect this motor again now and we will have a physical look at it. We'll put that part over there. <coughs> this one doesn't have a speed console so the wiring is very straightforward. It's just the mains comes in uh, one side of the mains, the, the positive side is switched, as is the negative side as well. Yes, it's it's a double double pole switch. Both sides are switched, and then it goes straight to the motor, straight to the motor, through the motor, out the motor, back out the switch. Then it goes to the ring gear, and from the ring gear, it goes um, this side here. It goes to the contacts on your ring gear there the contacts on the ring gear and back out through the mines lead so let's have a look at this motor now we've checked we've checked the fuse we've checked the lead we've checked the ring gear we've checked the switch we've checked the wiring because wires do come off sometimes so oh look at this a little wheel here now you'll be wondering where that's come from won't you well i'll tell you where it's come from that's come from underneath the um, ring gear thing here. These go in here. They just drop in. And that's so that your ring gear, your, your flex uh, coil holder can turn easily. Sometimes these are, if, if, sometimes I've known techies that if they lose one of these and they haven't got a sperm on, they just put it back without it. And you'll know that that's happened because it'll make a makes an unpleasant noise when you come to wind up and it sticks and it's it, <laughs> and they know there's a wheel missing. Uh, not necessarily the text left it out, it could be just worn out. Anyway, um, this motor here, right, this rubber collar here 
is to allow the motor to sit comfortably inside this part here. This part goes in there and it sits nicely in there. If you've got the wrong motor, it won't fit in there or it'll be loose. If you've got the right motor and the right wattage, it'll fit in nicely if it's the right model. So we can take that off just to look at the motor. Now here's your, here's your uh, fan section in there. You can't get into, well you can, well you can get into it, or you destroy the motor doing it. Um, this, oh wait, you look inside the fans here, inside the blades, um, and see if it's blocked. I've seen, the, I've seen these, they've been blocked solid. Uh, it overheats, damages the motor, no suction, and no motor required. Now, the first place I look when I take a motor out is through this gap here, at the commutator. These are the copper segments where the um, the power comes in and it goes through the carbon brushes. Now the carbon brushes here, um, you can you can replace these carbon brushes if they need replacing. Well, they should be replaced. No, don't wait until that they're they're really worn down because if you do, you'll damage the commutator. Take that screw out here. And then the brush will come out. Okay. It should come out. There we are. Let's take it out. Okay. Now there's your brush there. This is the carbon brush. Now you can see that brush is very, very damaged. And it's not springing up and down. It's solid. So that carbon brush is heavily damaged. And that means your commutator is also going to be damaged as well. The brushes slot in the back here, and um, you know, it de obviously, it depends how often you use um, your vacuum cleaner. If it's under heavy use, like for a commercial uh, user, you know, if a builder or, or somebody's using it all the time, then you need to replace these every well, could even be as often as every 12 months if it's used a lot. Now, that spring on the end of it is supposed to have a brush. Now, the copper wire to it is solid i can't even pull the brush out but you'll buy these as a to as a complete unit anyway you don't have to mess about like this i'm only just showing you that brush is solid it won't move so that's got to be replaced now let's have a look at the commutator now we've got the brush holder out the way that's the brush holder and the brush there okay carbon and they're called brushes okay um, the bloody cars! I hate them cars with great big exhausts. What's going on in the world? Are we all... Oh, this is all because of Fast and Furious, you know. They've all got the baseball caps on sideways or backwards. They've got the seats down so low, that you, you can hardly see the driver. They've lowered the suspension. They've got a great big bore exhaust in it, and they fall down flat out. They're all bleeding by me. Right, so... Oh, I was never like that. Me. <laughs> I had a Ford Anglia. <laughs> yeah, wide wheels, big exhaust, skim down head, yeah, all the jazz, <laughs> I should be so lucky, I mod mobbed carbers from the bleeding, I worked at a Hoover agency and I had the firm's van, I had to push the bloody thing every morning to start it, anyway, <clears throat> there we are, I should sue them for a bad back, still, anyway, as you can see, the commutator, is shot it's it's not even worth trying to repair that um you can use um uh what's the round of it well sandpaper basically not emery paper if you get a piece of emery paper in there just the width of the commutator put it around it it's obviously so the abrasive soil is on the comp then on this end here you get your drill with your um, bit on you can spin that you know put your drill on it like that this end here right so you're spinning it you'll need you'll, you'll, you'll need a, a socket a socket piece on your drill to go over the nut then you have to hold the um i can't think of the real name for it it's like a gem anyway it's it's sandpaper very fine um you can start off with a medium grease but, but you'll have to do that and go down till it's finer and finer and finer. And if you can have a vacuum cleaner sucking on this side as well, so it's sucking the bits out, all the better. Now, 
do that until you've got a nice shiny surface. Then you've got to get into these segments here. You must separate the segments um, inside there. And keep going at it and until it's really nice and shiny and you go right down to the finest grit you can get. Clean it out all the time. That's if there's no other damage. If there's any damage to the coils or the armature, then, then forget it. But it, it has worked in the past and you can save these motors, but this one is really badly pitted and it's unlikely that I could do anything with that. So it, it's gonna be a new motor. Anyway, so when you finish um, with, with your drill and your sandpaper, not emery paper, because that will conduct, um, you can keep sucking it out, blow it out, clean it out, <coughs> put your new brushes in, um, then you can try it. You may need a comb stick. Now a comb stick is a special stick which you put on the, um, uh, the commutator when it's turning and you, um, it helps the brushes to bed in. You might be lucky and you, you may not need a comb stick, but nine times out of 10 you will. Now I would advise you to look at some videos on YouTube about using a comb stick before you attempt it, okay? So you could possibly save the motors with new brushes and a bit of sandpaper. Um, this one, this motor is up for the scrap. It's no good. So what I'm gonna do is, if, if, you, if you get a genuine Henry motor, or if you look for a if you look for a motor for these, a genuine Henry motor will cost you ninety five pounds. Now at the moment you can buy these cleaners for hundred and three. That's how cheap they are. They're fantastic vacuum cleaners. But you can get motors um, new, uh, or refurbished, uh, for thirty five pound. A complete motor, complete with brushes. Just look on uh, maybe Amazon. And um, they work great. I, I, I fit them all the time. So there we are. You can either enjoy yourself messing about trying to fix your motor, or you can just order a new one for 35 quid. <coughs> Be careful what you're doing. Don't work on anything that's plugged in, unless you are an experienced tech. I would strongly advise you not, not to work on these uh, commutators if you're not an experienced tech, because you can kill yourself, okay? So there we are, that's the end of this little lesson. And uh, like I said before, if you spot a fault that may appear in a few years time, a few months time, get it sorted then. Because uh, some brainless moron will come back and kick off about it and cause you a lot of trouble. Do some brain servicing on anything that's uh, likely to kick back at you just because the person in the original complaint doesn't want to know about it you do for your own future okay thanks for watching bye for now